Let's start out by talking about a word that you've probably heard before, the word majority. Um, when we're dealing with voting, majority has a very, very specific mathematical definition. And that mathematical definition is that you have to have more than 50% of the total votes to have a majority. So let's consider a situation here. Let's suppose that we have an election and there are 29 ballots collected. My question is, if you want to have a majority of votes, what's the smallest number of votes that you would need in order to win this election? Well, how do you figure it out? The first thing you want to do is you want to figure out what 50% of the total ballots are. Well, in this case, I've got 29 ballots, so I want to figure out what 50% 50 of 29 is. Now, a little refresher on our percentages. Remember, any time that we want to do any calculations with percentages, we want to change them to decimals. Move the decimal two places to the left, so 50% is 0.5. The word of reminds us to use multiplication, and we do 0.5 times 29. When we do this, what we come up with is 14.5. So 50% 50, 50 of these 29 ballots would be the same as 14.5 ballots. Well, we need more than 50% of the, of the total votes, and so you would need 15 votes um, as a minimum to win the election with a majority. So you'd need 15 votes to have a majority. Of course, if you had more than 15, that would also be a majority. Now, in this particular case, um, we had a decimal. We rounded up to the next whole number, which made sense in terms of ballots. You couldn't really have half of a vote. Um, and so that worked good. Let's see what would happen if we had one more ballot that came in. In this particular case, um, again, in order to have a majority, I need to have more than 50% of the total votes. So the first thing we do is actually figure out what 50% of the total votes would be. In this case, 50% of 30, we do the same sort of calculation, 0.5 times 30. And in this case, we get 15. Now, this is where you need to be really careful, because in order to have a majority, you need to have more than 50% of the votes. So you would need not 15, but you need more than 15. You can't have partial votes or partial ballots. So you would need to go up to the next level and get 16 votes to have a majority if you had 30 ballots. Um, why does it work that way? Well, if your candidate only got 15 votes, um, then there might be some other candidate that also had 15 votes, and there would be a tie. Um, if you have a majority, you want a clear, a clear victory, so to speak, and you need to have actually greater than 50% of the total number of votes. So you'll have some calculations like this that you'll need to do in your homework where they're going to ask you how many, um, how many votes would you need to have a majority. And that this is all you're going to do. Figure out what that 50% line stands for and then round it up to the next vote because you need to have more than that vote. And if it lands on a whole number, that's not good enough. You need to go up to the next value because you need more than 50% of the vote to win. All right. Now, the next thing that is a huge point of confusion here is um, when we introduce the word majority and we introduce this new term of plurality. We just said that a majority, of course, had to be greater than 50% of the vote. But when we talk about a plurality, what a plurality is, is it's having the most votes. And a lot of people misuse the word majority. And when they use the word majority, they're, they're really meaning the most. That is not accurate. When we're talking about mathematical definitions, majority very, very specifically means greater than 50%. The word plurality is the word that we use when we're actually just looking for the most votes um, that show up. Now, if you're talking about only two candidates in an election, a candidate um, 
would have to get more than 50% of the votes. So if all you're talking about is two people running against each other, a majority and a plurality end up being exactly the same thing. Um, the most votes is going to be whoever has more than 50% of the votes because there's one person has more than 50%, the other person has less than 50%. So the one with the most has more than 50%. But if you have more candidates, it's completely possible to win an election with less than 50% of the votes. Um, and so here at this point, we're going to come up with another question that's going to be fairly frequently asked in your homework. And that is, what is the minimum number of votes that you would need to win with a plurality? Um, so how are we going to do that? And how could we decide? Well, um, it's all going to depend on how many candidates you have. Um, if you have, for example, let's suppose that we have five candidates running. If you have five candidates, then kind of think about what would happen for each vote. If we had a really close race, you would have each person would have one vote and then maybe each person has two votes and each person has three votes. And so if we have some sort of a close race, it's possible for the most votes to be nothing more than taking those 100% of the votes and dividing it by those five candidates. So in these cases, in, in a case like this where you had five candidates, to win with a plurality, um, it would be possible to win once you got more than 20% of the vote. Now, you might need more than that, but that would be the, um, the minimum number of votes that you would need. Uh, this will make a little bit more sense if we actually look at an example, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's suppose that we have five candidates and 218 voters. Um, in order to figure out what the minimum number of votes that we would need to win with a plurality, so that's what we're looking for here, minimum number of votes to win with a plurality. The first thing that we want to do is we need to figure out what percentage we're dealing with. Um, so we start out with 100%, and if we have a really close race, we'd have 100% divided up equally between those five people, and each of the five people could have 20% of the votes in a super close race. So um, if we figure out what 20% of those 218 votes is, um, in this case, 20% would be 0.20 or 0.2 of means times 218 votes. And when I multiply that through, I get that 20% of the vote would be 43.6 votes. Now, if we wanted in this really close race to actually make sure that we won, then we could say that there's no way you could win unless you had at least 44 votes. Um, and so 44 votes would be required to win the election. Now let's look at what actually happens if the winning candidate got 44 votes and everybody else um, got 43 votes. So if we have three, four other people, because there was a total of five candidates, so our winner had 44 and this was a really, really close race, so everybody else got 43. If I added all those things together, I only get 216 votes. Um, but we had 218 voters. The only way that this would work is if we actually had a, a three-way tie, because we'd need something like this to happen, where we have three people with 44 votes. And then, or three people with 44 votes and two people with 43 votes. And that would actually get us into this situation. If we don't allow ties, then the winning candidate would have to actually get 45 votes to make this work. Um, keep in mind this is a bare minimum. 
um, the votes would have to be very evenly split um, for this few of votes to actually work. Most likely it's going to require a whole lot more than 45 votes to win. So here we'd have a 45 votes minimum to win. Because um, we could do 45, somebody with 45, somebody with 44, and then the rest with 43. And would that work? Um, 9, 13, 18, yeah, so that's 218 votes. Um, so we could get this to work if we had somebody that had 45 votes. Um, if it's probably not going to be this close of a race, so the winner may very well need to have a lot more than 45 votes. But we can guarantee that if you have less than 45 votes, there's no way that you're going to win. Um, and so that creates kind of a unique situation for us um, that we can actually use to calculate stuff with. Uh, let's, look at our, uh, let's look at a couple of other examples that will be a little bit more of the format that you should expect on your homework. Um, the first sets of questions that you're going to have are going to give you a preference schedule. So kind of like what we were creating in the last table or in the last video um, where you list the number of uh, where you have a, an ordered preference for second and third choice and then how many voters voted for each of those. Um, the first question that they're going to ask you in these situations is how many voters were there actually in this election because obviously we need to know that if we want to figure out what a majority or plurality would be. To find the total number of voters, all that we do is we just add up the heads of these columns and these numbers will give us... Um, if we add each of these values up, we'll be able to calculate how many voters there actually were. Um, so in this problem, for example, we have 12 voters, 6 voters, 13 voters, and 4 voters. And if we add all of those together, 12 plus 6 is 18, um, 31, 35 voters. Now for our next question, it's asking us how many votes would be needed for a majority. Remember, a majority means that we need more than 50%. So um, let's figure that out. So first, let's figure out what 50% of 35 is. So it's just 0.5 times 35. Um, when we multiply that together, we should get 17.5. Um, and so the number that would actually be required to make sure you guaranteed a majority would be 18 votes, because we want to round that up to make sure we get what we want. Um, in the next problem, part of the problem is going to ask you how many votes are needed to get a plurality. Well, the, how many the um, you would need to guarantee um, that you wouldn't automatically lose is um, to look at how that 100% was going to be split up if you had a really close race. Um, what we want to look at here is we want to look at how many candidates we have because that's our, our deciding factor. In this case, we would have 100% of our votes divided between 30 or between three different candidates. And so when I do that, I get 33.3333 blah blah percent. So if I want to win, I um, you, having a plurality, I would have to make sure I had at least 33.33% of the total number of votes. Um, again, when you're doing calculations, make sure that you change those percentages to decimals. Then we want to multiply by the um, total number of votes. In this case, we're going to multiply that by 35, and that's going to get us... 11 and 11.67 um, votes. Um, again, what we're interested in looking at here is, let's go ahead and round it up, because we need to have more than this. That's the bare minimum that we would need, and that would give us 12 votes in order to win. Now, you do have to be careful about that. Um, this, this 12 votes is the minimum if you allow ties. If you don't allow ties, so this is 12 votes with ties allowed for the winner. If you don't want to allow ties, it's not too hard to figure out. Um, just double check what you've got. So in order to win, um, this, if this candidate had 12 votes, then the other two candidates would have 11 votes. If I add these up, that's only 34. Um, so 12 votes wasn't enough 
to get the 35 votes that we need with this person ahead. So we would actually need 13 votes to guarantee that we actually can win this election without having to resort to a tie. Um, let's try one last example, really similar. Um, and so you'll have several problems like this that you'll want to try. Again, to figure out how many voters, just add the total number of votes and those are always these top values here. How many of each preference ballot type did you have? So here we do 4 plus 8 plus 11 plus 15, 12. And so if we're adding these together, um, 4 plus 8 is 12, plus 11 is 23, and that gives me 38. Uh, how many votes are needed for a majority? Well, remember, a majority is 50%. We need more than 50% of the total. So 0.5 of means times, and my total is 38. And this happens at 50% um, is equal to 19 votes. So I need more than 19 votes because 19 is right exactly on the line. Um, so in order to guarantee that we have a majority, you would have to say that I need 20 votes because I need more than 19 to get that. Um, number of votes needed for a plurality, well, we're going to take that 100% of the votes and we're going to divide it by how many candidates we have. In this case, since my rankings go from first to fourth place, there are four candidates. So I'm going to take that 100%. I'm going to divide it by four. And in order to win this by a plurality, I would need more than 25% of the total number of votes. All right. Well, if I have 38 votes here, then 25%, so 0.25 times 38, and when I do that, what I, sh what I end up with is um, 9, oops, that didn't turn out, 9.5, I believe. Yeah, that should be right. Um, and so if I want to try to hope for a plurality here, always round that up to the next one, I would need 10 votes, and this would be with ties. If I allowed ties for a winner, I could do this with 10 votes. Um, again, how can you double check? Well, if the, the winner has 10 votes, then see what happens if everybody else gets 9 votes. If I do this, that's 27, 37. But I had 38 votes. So the way that this is now, two of my candidates would end up with 10 votes and I'd have a two-way tie. If you didn't want a two-way tie, then you'd have to go up one more. And so if, you're, if you had a candidate with 11 votes, then that would be the very minimum amount that you could have if you wanted to win with no ties. Um, so that there was only a single candidate winner. Now keep in mind, if the race is if the race is not, this is only for a really, really close race, it's possible that you may need more than 11 votes to win. Um, for example, if you look up at this, um, at this preference table up here, um, notice that if you're just looking at our first place winners here, candidates A and candidate C both have less than 11 votes, so there's no way that those candidates could win. Candidate B has 11 first place votes. Um, and so that would be the minimum that we'd need for a plurality. But candidate D here had 15 votes. So having this minimum amount of votes to win wasn't enough for candidate B. Candidate B had that minimum, but because it wasn't a super, super close race, um, candidate D actually won this with 15, so significantly more. So just because you have the minimum doesn't mean you're going to win when we're talking about plurality. Um, but it's the minimum amount. So we can go right off the bat and say right away, oh, I know candidates A and C did not win this election. Um, anyway, so this is the basic idea. You'll have several homework problems where this is what you want to do. Find the total number of voters by adding everything through the top. Find the number of votes needed for a majority. Just find out what 50% of that total is and then round it up to the next value because we need more than 50%. And then for a plurality, first of all, figure out what the percentage that we want to deal with is um, by taking 100% and dividing it by your number of candidates. 
then figure out what that percentage of our total number of votes is and round it up to the next value. That's going to be your number if you have ties. Um, so if you're, if you're willing to have more than one person that wins first place, then you can do that. If you don't want to have more than one person that wins first place, then just kind of go back through here and you'll need to go up one more. Um, in this case, if I had somebody with 10 votes and then everybody else with 9, I didn't account for everybody, so there was a tie. So I needed to jump up to 11 votes before I could actually have it work. Um, all right, so give that a whirl on your homework. Good luck, and if you have any questions, please ask on the discussion boards.